I have uh, so many Intel motherboards and no one is interested in watching the Intel motherboards so we're gonna do the X870E Nova Wi-Fi Phantom Gaming from ASRock because everybody's building a 9800X3D base system, aren't they? Oh, it's gonna like buy your stuff before the tariffs. Ah. First up with a PCIe and M.2 layout. This is a motherboard that features 4 plus 1 M.2. Why, why do you say 4 plus 1? Well, one of them is actually PCIe Gen 3 and it's only two lanes. Really, it's designed for SATA style M.2. So SATA style M.2 and this front edge M.2. I like M.2 that are in unconventional locations up near the memory, out of the way, and I'll show you why in a second. We're gonna add 16 terabytes of flash to this platform using Enterprise Castoff for about $500. Yeah, $500 of 16 terabytes of flash. That's only slightly more expensive than a mechanical hard drive. Yay, e-waste. You've also got your Gen 5 M.2 with a quick release at the top. I love the quick release mechanism. And on ASRock's higher end motherboards, you can get that pretty much across the board. That's actually a differentiating factor this generation. Now between X870E and X670E, uh, those are basically the same chipset. There have been some very minor improvements, some very minor quality of life improvements and board layout improvements. The promise here from ASRock and other OEMs is that you're gonna be able to use fast memory. So like it was in the title, our ADATA XPG DDR5 8000 mega transfer memory. This is not CUDIM. CUDIM is an Intel thing, at least for right now. CU DIMM is an Intel thing. You don't need CU DIMMs, and in fact, you shouldn't buy CU DIMMs because the AMD platform doesn't use the CU DIMM functionality, which can enable higher memory clocks. It can be a little bit of a challenge going beyond DDR5-6000. DDR5-6000 is still the sweet spot. That was true on 7000 series AMD. That is still true on 9000 series AMD. It is also conventional wisdom that the X3D chips that have the extra V-cache mean that it is more forgiving of slower memory. That is basically still true. However, if you do run fast memory, DDR5-8000, and if you can eke out a little bit more fabric speed, you know, like 2000, maybe 2133, 2166, 2100, something in that versus the 2000 infinity clock, you will realize uh, performance benefit in games beyond 1080p resolution and the highest end and most demanding games. We've covered a fair bit of that on this channel before. This is really just a motherboard overview. Mainly my concern is can we get it to post reliably with DDR5-8000 because that is sort of where different model motherboards and different motherboard vendors begin to differentiate themselves. And ASRock's lower cost motherboards are really optimized for maximum st stability at DDR5-6000. And it can be a little bit of a challenge to get DDR5-8000 to work. Our PCIe slot layout is we've got our Gen 5 X16, and then there's a physical X16 slot at the bottom. This is PCIe Gen 4, however. These three M.2 are all four lane Gen 4 M.2. I still recommend on the AM5 platform that you run two DIMMs. So like two 48 gig DIMMs for 96 gigs of memory is sort of the practical limit. Yes, you can run four DIMMs, but your memory is gonna run a little bit slower. This motherboard did pretty well. I was able to get 5200 stable with four 48 gig DIMMs. That's kind of an accomplishment, but generally it's a bit of a headache. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our rear IO. So with the rear IO, we've got HDMI out, that's from the iGPU, then we've got two ultra power USB 3 ports, we got two lightning gaming ports, two USB 2 ports, two super speed to 10 gigabit ports, and then we've got our two USB 4 connections. USB 4, if you're out of the loop, is a Thunderbolt compatible PCIe tunneling solution from AMD. So you can use Thunderbolt peripherals with this generally. Also, this motherboard has an attractive metal backplane on the back, which in the VRM area does actually have a thermal connection to the motherboard. AMD CPUs don't use a lot of power. The VRM is extreme maximum overkill because that's become a marketing thing. It's more of a meme. You're not gonna dump 400 watts into this desktop processor. I mean, you could, but there's no reason to. Oh no, it won't boot a DDR5-8000. The motherboard's terrible. No, BIOS. So I put the oldest version of the BIOS on the motherboard to show that, hey, sometimes even fresh, brand new, you gotta update the BIOS, just depending on how long it's been sitting on a shelf or other factors. Sometimes an old BIOS version just can't train the memory correctly or they figured something out in the memory training algorithms or it's a different 
chipset or a different spin or a different vendor, whatever. This is now 3.12 instead of 3.06. Now for DDR5 on your first boot, it's going to take a little while. The more memory you have, the longer it'll take. If you have four DIMMs, it's going to take upwards of five minutes. This is a really quick first boot. I'm going to pick DDR5 8000. It makes a lot of changes to the BIOS. Save and reset. So just because you got the 8000 memory, it doesn't actually take effect until you make the change in the BIOS. And now this is also the waiting game is as quick as it came on when we first assembled the system and made sure everything was working. It'll take just as long, if not longer, for it to make sure that the memory actually runs at DDR5-8000. All right, so bottom line, after testing our XPG DDR5-8000 Lancer memory kit, I don't really recommend this motherboard for DDR5-8000. It's still a little bit fiddly even with the BIOS, but it at least posts now, so that's something. You'd probably be better off getting the 6400 the XPG Lancer blade. This is a little different aesthetic design. It's a black instead of gray. The plastic trim is slightly different as well, but this would work at 6400 natively on this board without too much headache, and it costs a bit less. But basically, Anime Girl or, or no Anime Girl. On this platform, no Anime Girl. Now, I also talked about 16 terabytes of storage and how we're going to enable that. This is an enterprise storage drive. It looks like an isolinear rod, but larger, doesn't it? Uh, this is 16 terabytes of flash, and this cost many thousands of dollars not all that long ago. This was something that was designed and specified by the Open Compute Project. Servers that have this for storage are coming off lease, and so occasionally at your local government surplus, university surplus, things like this will pop up, eight 16 terabytes, it's worth about $500, give or take, on the market. I mean, like reselling. You shouldn't pay more than $500 for this because there's some downsides. This is PCIe Gen 3 as well. See, Open Compute specified, goodness gracious, these flash drives are using too much power and they really don't need to be all that fast. So this thing will do four gigabytes per second read and write all day long, the limit of PCIe Gen 3, and it has a PCIe Gen 3 interface. The problem is this interface. This is an E1 interface. Well, actually, technically, this is an E1.L drive, L for long, S for short, E1.S, and then there's E3, which is wider. There are adapters. This one is one that we have on the Level 1 Tech store. It's from UMC Koi. This is not my design or anything like that. This is a re-driverless PCIe Gen 4 compatible E1.S adapter. So I've got a PCIe Gen 4 Samsung. This is the PM9A3. By the way, you can order these from serverpartdeals.com. Serverpart Deals sponsored me for a mechanical hard drive video, but I actually bought these from server part deals because that's just how I roll. And um, so this is a PCIe card now that we can use in here. And there we go. And that is a four terabyte E1.S and it performs well, so it's gonna cost more. Whereas our 16 terabyte is, uh, doesn't, doesn't work unless I get out the mill. There are these $20 adapters the, from NFHK and they work pretty well. They're technically Gen 4 compatible, but they won't always work at Gen 4 speeds. It depends on your motherboard. So like ASRock Workstation class motherboards that have a programmable redriver in the BIOS will work better with these. I would not recommend Gen 4 on a desktop board like this unless the adapter physically has redrivers. Now if you order this adapter and the card, mechanically it's like, oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't fit. These standoffs are in the way. Well, I have some good news for you. Those standoffs are breakaway. They're designed to break off. And then at that point with this adapter, you have a standard U.2 connection. As Level 1 has been known to do in the past, there's probably a 3D printable adapter that we've put together for these cards to have a carrier for these that you could mount in an otherwise normal and standard case. Come to the Level 1 Text Forums and, you know, meet up with me or Amber and we'll see what we got. Uh, these PCIe adapters are also compatible with E3.S. So those are the flatter, more card-like variety. So E1 is shorter and E3 is taller. It's basically for 1U or 2U servers, rack mount. So there you go. There's a quick look at the X870E Nova Wi-Fi. Oh, I almost forgot. There's an easy release for the GPU. So when you do add your GPU and you change it, it's pretty easy to swap because the mechanism can be released far away from your graphics card. So that's a nice feature. 20 plus 2 plus 1 power phase design. I mean, it's a nice motherboard, but it's designed for AM5, but it's not designed to be the most insanely overclockable motherboard ever, 
but it will give you solid performance with something like the 9800X3D running at standard DDR5-6000. You can go a little beyond DDR5-6000, but if you're looking at 8000 and beyond, you want to move up to an even more high-end motherboard. In terms of Linux support, basically everything works. The 5G wired network, that's a Realtek 8126 numbering in Linux. You'll need the firmware and a recent kernel, very recent. It can be made to work, but it didn't work out of the box on our Nobara install, uh, at least not without all the updates. All in all, not a terrible choice for motherboards. I'm Wendelis Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me at the Level 1 forums.